Hi everyone. This is a mini mania update. I think it's a mini mini update. We're going to see. So today is a speech therapy day, which naturally means I'm going to be on the screen anyway. And I feel like even though I just recorded not even a week ago, I have so much to update on. I don't know if that happens to other people, but it's just been a really like compressed and dense, dense, dense. It's been a very dense, a uh, couple of days with stitching and just kind of like mania, lots of mania. So I'm just gonna jump right into the stitching because then it'll all just kind of unfold as I normally speak and ramble. So yesterday I did something that I don't think I've ever done before. I worked on three projects in one day and I don't know if that's like the definition of mania, but it could be. Um, I currently have seven total whips, including my two new starts, which I need to do a whip update so that you guys can see what is currently being worked on and what is my goal to finish for this year. That's, well, we're in almost June. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. So yesterday I started out with, and I don't think I've shown this yet. I've taken some pictures and I've uploaded it on my Instagram, but I haven't recorded. So it's kind of far along. I think the last time I showed this, it was just literally fabric and floss. So this is Birds to the Bows, Bows, Bows by Lindy Stitches. Stephanie, she's an amazing designer. Um, I started this on... Gosh, I don't remember. I think Friday. Today is Thursday. And I want to say I stitched on, no, I lied. I don't remember when I started this. I started this over the weekend, but I think actually it was Sunday. Yeah. Sunday I started this and it was started against my stitch Sania rules. I had not finished Macaw the page finish, so in theory I should not have started this, but I was short like 50 stitches. I'm just gonna like hold this up here. And now I'm gonna hold it down because that's, I guess a workout. Um, I was like 50 stitches short of Macaw, but what was remaining was a lot of confetti. A lot, a lot, a lot of confetti, and I'll show you all of that when I get to that project. And what happens is like, for me, and I don't know for the rest. So if I'm typically working on just one project, I mean, I have nothing else to really distract me and I would attack the confetti. It would take me forever because I'll stitch like two color change and then I'm on my phone for like 30 minutes or I get up and do something because I just can't sit down and confetti stitch unless I'm like in the zone. Um, but since I've recently started two projects, and I really wanted to start this one. I went against my rules and I said, I mean, 50 stitches, I, I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna get the page finished. It's gonna be okay. We still have like, I think the remainder of this week, but at that point in time, it was like two full weeks for me to finish that page finish on Macaw. So why not start something that I really wanted to start, right? Stitch what I want, when I want. I think it was sweet, we. I've heard that thrown around a couple times. Don't know who coined it, but I've heard it. Remember, I don't know this whole social media floss tube life. I'm learning about it, but don't know at all. Um, so that being said, tangent. So I went ahead and I started Birds to the Bows and I could not put this thing down. Um, let's see. There are a couple of things that I did a little bit different. This is on 32 count Lugana in the colorway um, Carnival by Picture This Plus. I love the colors on this and I think it really complements the colors in the chart. However, when I pulled the floss for Birds to the Bows, there are a couple of colors that are same color way but muted and I really wanted to get like a fluorescent bright just like in your face color scheme 
So I'm pretty sure that, or actually I think I have it here. So this is like, I don't, I don't think I've ever shown this either. This is my folder of my patterns. So these are like all of my working copies. They all go into this really ratty folder that I need to get a new one because it's like completely just, you know, it's been loved. And this has been loved only for like a year and a half. So all of the stuff in here, this is all like my current whips. Yeah, these are like all my current whips. So let me pull out, okay. I pulled all the floss and when I pulled all the floss and I looked at it, there were a couple of colors. I think a couple, I mean like half. Half of the colors for me were just a little bit muted. So I remember 335. So this pink, for example, was more of like a dusty rose pink and I ended up, it's still pink, but I just brightened it. So the original color for it was 223 and I went with 335. And then other things. So this is the original color that's called for, which gives a good example of what I mean by muted. Oh, I can't, like a muted orange. So what I did was I switched it for this brighter orange and I'm going to frog this and put the brighter orange in there. The beak and the feet are also brightened. And let's see, the crown or this like goldish yellow is the same as the called for. And this kind of like grayish purpley is called for. So, and I wanna say that this green, let me see. This green is a square. So this green also, same thing. It was supposed to be probably a little bit darker, but I went with a higher, like a brighter color. And this green here too. This green was kind of, again, like that muted dusty color. And I went with like a brighter green. So far, I think it's working. And like I said, so, this is kind of the first project that I have actually done real color changes on, but it's kind of cheating. Like it's not real color changes. It's just taking the colors that were called for and going brighter. And the reason for that is, and I know that this happens all the time to me and I've heard a lot of people. It's like when you look at the picture, in my head, when I see this picture, I see these like really, really bright colors. But when I pulled the floss, it was just like muted. And I've seen other people, like they've stitched it and it, it does come out looking like this. But for some reason, I think that the camera brightens it up maybe a little bit. Because when I stitched it using this, I feel like I'm getting the same effect as this, but I'm not using the right colors. So I don't know. I'm just putting a little personal spin on it. And for me, a personal spin is let's make it bright and obnoxious because that's kind of how I am. Bright and obnoxious sometimes. And it's so funny. So let me talk to you real quick about the needle minders. I need my dragons. I have so many dragons that I haven't met in San Antonio, but this one is just my trusty clay by Kim. I literally have two dragons here. I have this one and an ice dragon. All of the other ones are in San Antonio. All together waiting to meet me. And then this one is um, from Abby at Top Knot Stitcher. I don't think she currently has it, but she has a bunch of these like awesome vintage wooden paper designs. This one came from a grab bag. And what I love about the grab bag is I really felt, and I don't know, maybe this is me just looking too much into it. I really felt that Abby took the time to kind of like sort through and pick really good needle minders that would speak to the person who was buying. And I don't know, like I said, she does watch my floss tube. Hi, Abby. I watch hers. We do talk online. But I just, this one, as soon as I got the grab bag, I didn't choose this one. Abby chose it for me. And it's 
it's just one of my favorites and I love her on this fabric. I love her on this project. It's the little things that make you happy. So I really love my little fairy girl and I know I have another grab bag waiting for me in San Antonio so I'm excited to look and see it, what those are and I've purchased a couple more of these um, wooden ones. She's having a needle minder clearance sale on her Etsy and there are some not like I said, not this one, but similar style with like random figures and stuff in this paper, which is so good for the needle. So good. Good strong magnet. It's flat. Love this thing. Love Abby. Definitely go and clear out her needle minders. So after I worked on Birds of the Bows for a little bit, I maybe worked on it like an hour or two yesterday and not sitting for a full hour. I like like I said, I'll put on a couple stitches or like I'll finish a color and then I get on my phone or I get up and I go make something to eat or I drink or I take out the swatches. So, but in the two hour time frame of up and down and up and down in stitching time, I finished whatever I was working on there, which I actually think it was uh, this guy I finished and I extended the border and I started some of the pink. Yeah. Oh, and I put like some of these like little orange details here. So I did that yesterday and I was like, okay, like good enough. And I remembered, I, I don't know if this happens to other people, but when I'm working on a project and I know I feel kind of crazy saying all of these things, but I'm talking to a cross stitch community. And so you guys are going to understand me much more than when I will talk to other non cross stitchers. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You're like thinking my brain is going when I'm working on this and I'm like, and I have a lot of, like I said, this like outstanding projects thing really messes with me and I feel guilty working on some projects while I have others that I should be working on. But it, at the end of the day, I really shouldn't be working on any of them. I mean, there, there's nothing, nothing's gonna happen if I don't work on that. But my internal dialogue is all over the place. So I had said, and my goal was to stitch motifs on the unicorn tapestry. And I did that really well for about three or four days where I would sit down and I would stitch some of the motifs, but I hadn't in a while. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna pull out Unicorn Tapestry. It's been a while since I've touched it. And by a while, I mean like five days, but that's, that's a while for me. And I'm going to stitch some more motifs. So yesterday I pulled her out. This is where I am right now. This is not an easy stitch. This is not a relaxing stitch so far. Of course, I am tackling like the more difficult part. Here, oh, let me get closer. I am tackling the more difficult parts. So stitching on, this is the 32 count Mystic by Picture This Plus. There is a lot of start and stop. These little tiny flowers are the death of me and there are so many it's tiny like what, what is it five five stitches five stitches and then they like go around and not only that the middle so the fifth stitch is a totally different color so I have to start travel stop travel it's a lot of traveling let me show you the back So here's the back and you'll see that like I travel quite a bit. Now, who cares what the back looks like? Uh, in my opinion, honestly, this for me is a pretty neat back. But I know that for other stitcher people, they're like, oh my gosh, look at those threads and they're hanging everywhere. I don't care. As long as you can't see it from the front, it's fine. So some of the things that have helped me because I was having a really hard time stitching and I wasn't loving how the stitches were laying. I'm kind of really picky about how stitches lay. I want them to be as uniform as possible. If not, I'll pick at them or restitch them or reposition them. So I was having a lot of trouble getting my stitches to lay the way that I wanted. I think part of it has to do with the fact that this is the Belfast linen. Um, Belfast linen is just, it's a little more forgiving when you're stitching. So when you put the needle through and you like make your actual cross, 
I feel like sometimes it can be wonky just on the slightest change of tension because I can't get that really tight tension like in a Q snap. So with Lugana, I feel like I can stitch this however. It can be in a Q snap, it can be in hand. It's so tight, the actual fabric, that like it's really easy to get really uniform stitches. Whereas Belfast linen, you have to be very careful. If you pull too tight, your stitch is gonna be super tiny. If you carry over to the next stitch, your floss will drop and look completely crazy. So I'm constantly, like I said, this is more of a difficult stitch because of the tiny motifs and trying to get it to lay in a uniform fashion. So it's not relaxing. It's definitely a challenge stitch when I want it. But where I was going with this is I used to be a die hard hoop stitcher. I stitched everything in a hoop. So I bought these years ago and they came in a pack and they're like, they're super cool. I don't know the name of them. I know that they come in a pack, they're plastic and they have this like snappy lock in place kind of thing. So I've been using these for years. I stopped using them because what I was doing is being super lazy and leaving my project in them and then trying to iron hoop marks on linen is really difficult. But I went upstairs into my little craft closet and I pulled this guy out and I said, you know what, I'm gonna go back to my roots, I'm gonna go and get my hoop and see if that helps. It worked wonders, so you can see the hoop mark, but that's easy, it's not super tough to get out. So when I put that in the little tiny hoop, I feel like it was easier for me to focus on each motif because as you can see, it kind of encloses it. So it helped with one, the motivation of like continuing to fill the void space, each little motif next to each little motif. It also helped with my um, stitches laying a little bit more uniform. The tension was much better. I just, I felt better. And well, and also yesterday, apparently I was very motivated to stitch. So funny story about this. As I'm stitching this guy, I did take a picture and I was going to upload it onto Instagram. And as I'm uploading this onto Instagram, I hear the loudest crash of my life upstairs. It sounded like the ceiling had collapsed and then I just heard like trickling and it sounded like water. This has happened now three times in my life and they have never been good things. So the first time was at my childhood home. I was taking care of my sister. I must've been about 11 or 12 and my sister must've been, I would say like nine, right? And upstairs playing probably my PlayStation because that's what all I did as a child is either PlayStation, no, it was pretty much PlayStation and on the phone and internet with AOL. Um, so I heard the huge crash, went downstairs, the ceiling had collapsed and it was just raining from my ceiling. Um, and I remember calling my dad. I was freaking out because I basically was like, oh my gosh, the house is falling down. But it turns out that it was just like a leak that had leaked for 10 years from just like a little pinhole and the water collected and the ceiling just gave out and completely collapsed. Everyone was fine, nothing happened, great things. Okay, so second time I've heard this crash before. Can you hear the snoring? Second time, he's so used to floss tube now and me recording that he just doesn't care. Remember the first few videos when he was like freaking out and he would just like play with the ball and stuff. Now he's like, you're crazy and you talk to your camera and this is normal. Back. Second time this happened was at my dad's house. So my second home. And I was probably like 15 or 16 and I hear a huge crash and I come out of my room and I see a leg hanging out from the ceiling. We had an electrician who was going to, I think, install some sort of floor lighting or something, and he wasn't walking on the beams or he fell, I don't know, and his leg went through the drywall, uh, drywall? The ceiling wall, one leg. You can imagine how traumatizing that is. So you go out and you just see a leg hanging out from the ceiling. That was the second crash. Third crash. So I'm about to upload my picture on Instagram, which I never did, and I hear, 
the loudest crash of my life in trickling. So in my head, I'm like, well, it's been raining. The ceiling collapsed like the first time this has happened to me. And there's water trickling everywhere. Wonderful. I go upstairs and no, it was not that. My shower exploded. I have no idea how this happened. One of the side panelings of my glass shower shattered, completely shattered and dropped the heavy, heavy, heavy door, shower door. The shower door crashed into the wooden door that I have that are like super solid wood, lodged itself in there so the shower door didn't freaking shatter. But the amount of glass that I had to pick up, it was two heavy, heavy bags full. Each bag is probably like 15 to 20 pounds. And I'm still so puzzled as to how a shower can just explode out of nowhere. I read a couple of articles that say that there could be, could have been a micro fracture. That's just, you can't even see. And it just gave out. And since it's tempered glass, it just completely exploded. That was one. And then there was another one that talked about a phenomenon. I don't remember what the phenomenon was called. And same thing. It just explodes. So apparently, while it is rare, it is not uncommon. However, I'm going to have to save those articles for my landlord because, he, I mean, me in a landlord position, he's going to think that I like threw something at the shower, like just grabbed something and threw it and shattered the whole shower, which is not the case. It's the guest bathroom shower. Like we don't even use that shower. So I think he's coming over today to come and scope out the situation, but I definitely have that article on hand. And I can definitely say that anytime that I hear a huge loud boom and like rain, I'm not gonna go and check it out anymore. I am done with that. So yeah, that's the funny story tied to unicorn tapestry, which I will now forever have in my head. Okay, so I clean up all of the mayhem I have no desire <laughs> to stitch on unicorn tapestry anymore because I needed something a little bit more relaxing. So out comes out my relaxing slash stressful stitch, macaw. So let's go back to how I had said that macaw had maybe like 50 stitches left for a page finish, but it was all confetti. Not only was it confetti, it was confetti that, well, here, let me show you the hole. So here we are now, page finished, and we have just the half page to go, which will get done by May, but we're back to the blobs. Now the blobs are a love-hate relationship because who likes stitching blobs? Not me. But at the same time, blobs equal, I can show you this. Blobs equal large chunks of solid color with very little color changes. So since blobs are semi-relaxing, I know that this will be, again, the relaxing love-hate stress because instead of color changing, excuse me, instead of color changing every five seconds, like on Unicorn Tapestry and Birds to the Bows, Bows um, is not super color changey, but it's just, it's not blobs. Blobs are a love-hate relationship. When you're in the mood to stitch and just like not pay attention and not count as much, blobs are the way to go. So this will get done for sure by May, by the end of May. So what was left on my stitches though, I did all the blobs, I did all of the black, and what I left was this. As you can see, is a lot of confetti. Lots and lots and lots of confetti. And at first, when I was stitching it and it was calling for these like neon blues and all I had was like black and green, I was like, why do we need blues? It should all be black. Duh, you can see the little trace of the blue from the outside of his wing. Now, 
I know you guys have never seen the full and honestly I don't think you'll ever see the full because I don't even remember I bought this chart so long ago that I just don't even know if it's still on Etsy but I think I had mentioned in my previous videos there is one more row but we're calling it quits here I feel so two things one I don't have the brain capacity to just continue going forward number one number two I do like the fact that now it's going to be a square versus like a, a full portrait. Number three, I also feel that if I were to stitch that last row, it will take away from the focal point, which I want to be the face and the eye of the bird. Um, if we talk about kind of like the theory of, now I'm gonna sound all fancy, but I really don't know what I'm talking about. My dad also dabbled in photography, so I know a little bit um, if you divide this into, you know, your squares, you want the focal point in the middle or as close to the middle as possible. So the focal point here is going to be his face. If I add another row, no longer will the focal point be of the face. It'll be of the bird in its entirety or more of its chest. And I really like the, the realism from the macaw is just it's, I mean, honestly, he's very majestic. It's a very majestic looking bird. And I don't want to take away from that. I don't want to take away from the, the realism that the eye is giving, the colors from his head, just the detail. It's just amazing. I mean, I, I pull him out and although I call, I, I talk about him and I'm super negative towards him, he just has been very impressive. He's a very impressive bird. I think he's going to look phenomenal in the house. The cool thing is that it looks like a painting or it looks like a picture. And then when you go up close, you see that it's stitching. The stitching is very uniform. Another thing that I'm really liking is I had heard a lot about page breaks and seeing page breaks in the stitching. I cannot tell you where one page starts and one page ends, and I don't know why. Because I understand the theory behind page breaks and the changing in the stitching, right? You're gonna get just like a different, you'll see a, a clear page break. I don't see that here. The lines that you're seeing are from the folding, because I fold all of my stuff, but there's no, page breaking. So I don't know. I'm, I'm very grateful that that didn't happen on this piece, but I will have to keep that in mind for any future full coverage because that would be very unfortunate. I think maybe the Ada helped. And I also think that the two over one helped make it so thick and puffy that you don't see a page break. I don't know. I just didn't have any page break issues. And this I finished last night. So what's my plan? Let me tell you what my plan is. My plan is definitely to finish the macaw. But today is Thursday and today is a speech therapy day. Um, I just don't, I'm, and I'm also kind of in a stitchy hangover from yesterday because I stitched so much. I may put a couple of green blobs just to get it started because what happens with me is when I'm at a nice stopping point, I tend to hide things and then I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's at a good stopping point. And if it's in the middle of something, then I can't leave it. It'll be in the back of my head and I have to finish it. So I may put in a couple of green blobs today, some relaxing stitching. Actually, the more that I talk about it, I definitely think that's what I'm gonna do. Which means if I continue that path, this should be finished very soon like before mania stops or my mania my sania my stitch sania mania so from there i think that for the remainder of may whatever i yeah for the remainder of may i'm going to just stick to versus vows and tiny modernist unicorn tapestry 
I am not going to start any more projects. I have issues with having so many outstanding projects because I, I want the finishes. And the more projects that I have, the more I feel like I have to work on them all and the more that I spread myself out on projects, the less I'm gonna get accomplished in a time frame. I hope that made sense. But like, if I'm working on two or three projects, I think that that's gonna be my max of active. Like, this was actually really good. I had never done this and Stitch Mania really kind of uh, opened me up to kind of a new skill set and a new mentality. I do like having two to three whips active, like in a rotation right next to me, ready to go, because it was three different projects that required different techniques or different mindsets. So I had the stress-free stitching from Macaw because it was, like I said, a lot of just solid colors and just kind of like this meditative, you like how I'm like, I'm already in it, this meditative stitch. So if I really needed something to kind of wind down and stitch on, Macaw did it for me. And then with Lindy stitches, um, if I wanted color and I wanted fun and bright and kind of a medium between this, uh, meditative stitching and kind of craziness from color changing and stuff, then Lindy Stitches is the way to go for me because I'm loving, one, the colors. I love the colors. I just, I, we are in this kind of crazy world and sometimes we need some bright and love and good feels. And this has really done it because it's also nice to see that the colors that have kind of changed slightly are working. Um, that for me was kind of scary to kind of veer off of what is called for because what is called for is how it came out and it's gorgeous and I just wanted to add a little bit of flavor and it's working out. So it's, this has brought me a lot of joy, a lot of joy in these kind of dark, sometimes really tough days. This is my piece. And then when I want something that's like challenging but rewarding because you're like, yes, I totally, totally knocked that out. And I'm look at how this is all coming along and I did it. This is my, my go-to. So this is the one that even though it's the biggest headache and the most complicated project that I have right now. Yeah, this is the most complicated project that I have going right now. It's not hard. There's still, it's just cross stitching, but it's just, it's more work. This is the one. And now with the hoop, I think it's going to go even quicker because like I said, it, it kind of encloses what I'm working on and it motivates me to continue the color changes to fill in those holes. So I stitched quite a bit and filled in a bunch of holes. And then next I'll move over and continue the motifs and then I'll go and do the vine. And I'm a middle starter. And for this one, I, I'm going to have... A lot of fabric but once I take it to the framer they usually will chop it off and give me any remnants so I may have some for like really tiny smalls which I don't really stitch much but it's good to have um so yeah that's kind of the oh did I talk about my plans so after I'm done with macaw for May I'm going to alternate between Lindy stitches and uh, unicorn tapestry and then come June my, I'm going to kind of take this format that I did for Stage Mania and make it slightly my new norm for the next upcoming months. So my plan for next month, since June is right around the corner, is I'm going to make Athena my focus. Um, I'm having mirabilia withdrawals and so is my dad. <laughs> He's asking me about my mirrors. And mirrors are so, they're so rewarding and fun for me because I feel like if you mix the three between um, the meditative stitch, the challenge, and the colors, you're going, Amir is the way to go. There's all three in one. Um, and you can choose on one project what you want to work on depending on how you're feeling and what you're craving for that stitching time. So Athena is going to be my main focus point in June. And 
depending on how I feel, I may work in these two and continue working on them. So those will be like my three active whips for June. And then in my head also, July, I'm going to definitely pull out Santa's magic for Christmas in July. I haven't touched him in a really long time. I miss him too. I, I think about him a lot and I really want that finish before well, on or before Christmas, um, which I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but if I make him the focal point for July, then there's a really good chance. Um, I still have no plans and no kind of expectation to when I'm going back to San Antonio because things are kind of crazy still. Um, I definitely don't want to travel back if things are going to be, I don't know, like I understand that we're not going to go back to normal for a while, but I just, nah, you guys got me. I don't want to go back unless it's like somewhat normal. And right now it's definitely not somewhat normal. Um, it sounds like our borders here are going to open up in July, but we're bracing for a really big shift in the economy. I don't quite know how that's going to affect us directly. Um, we'll have to stay tuned and see because the Bahamas is definitely a tourism a tourist economy, tourism economy, and they have shut down tourism completely to a stop uh, April, May, and then all of June. That's heavy. That's very heavy. So I don't know what's gonna happen there. Um, so focusing on my whips and not thinking about what I have as a new start is gonna help a lot. And then also I have already like in my head, which are going to be my next two new starts, but I don't even want to say them because I don't want to commit to them and then something changed completely. So I just have them tucked away on my notes. Um, for the next video, I'm definitely going to pull out all of my whips because I do have plans on when I'm going to continue working on them because I sat down and I made notes and you guys have seen all of my whips, but it's been a while. So I'm going to pull them all out again and explain when they're going to be the focal points. So I am basically booked out through July with my plans, which I think is good. Um, you guys know what May is. June is going to be Athena focal and then my two others, which all like rotate between three active and then July, the focal point is going to be Santa and then I'll have two others that I'll be working on whichever ones they may be they may be other whips they may be this it just kind of i have to see where i'm at at that point in time so yeah um i really thought that this was going to be a little mini update but it ended up being a lot longer uh let me know if you kind of like this format i did go more in detail about the projects and kind of how i'm feeling what i'm thinking the detail and kind of techniques and tips um, as I'm stitching them. I do definitely want to incorporate more of how I stitch and how I do things because I have been watching a lot of videos recently and I've picked up a couple of things that I've learned. Um, just little things. I mean, you know, for example, sorry, last thing. This wasn't recent, but if you look at the back of my macaw, you're going to see an evolution. So when I, this is what I started last year. And this is how I stitched my entire life. I would start my thread, not in a loop start. I would take two and then I would secure it in the back. I don't know what that's called. And then leave like a tail end. And then when I would end my thread, I would do the same thing. Basically go under in the back and leave the tail. So you see all of those tails hanging out. The problem with leaving tails out though, is that when you go from the front, a lot of times you'll pull through um, either fuzz or a part of a tail and it's such a pain to locate it and try to get it back to normal. Through floss tube and in this year of floss tube and social media stitching, I learned the loop start, which is such a simple concept, but it just blew my mind. Um, I will, I will do a video on tips and tricks that I've learned. And then I also learned how to tie off my ends and not get little ends. So I still have some like here, but I need to trim them. And it's been a whole new world. So see all of the ends at the top and then the evolution of the back. <laughs> I don't pull threads out from the front anymore. 
such a simple trick and it's I've stitched my entire life like my entire life I've been used to pulling threads out and then spending time to tuck them in the back again little tips and tricks so little tips and tricks that I do that I haven't learned from anyone and just kind of self-taught myself self-taught myself self-taught um, I do want to record some more but it's a little difficult one to get recording time two to get a camera set up because I do record on my phone and positioning and stuff it just takes a little bit more tech savviness um, I'm, although I'm tech savvy I'm not that tech savvy so just kind of future things um let me know in the comments if you have specific questions or if you want me to go into more detail about something um i'll definitely read those and take those into consideration and work those into future videos but until now i'm going to sign off he signed off a long time ago but i'm going to sign off here and wish you guys some happy stitching happy mania because we're getting to the tail end of it and you guys are amazing thank you so much for the likes thank you so much for the dislikes you know what a thumbs down tells me hey that video was not doing too hot for me so i i'm not the person that's going to yell at thumbs downs it happens um so thanks for the thumbs up that helps a lot too in recommending to other cross stitchers um and floss tubers in the youtube algorithm so that's what that's for it's not just like a little like it it does help and number two thank you for subscribing um thanks for being loyal like that's super cool too uh, i do this for you guys i do it to engage with you guys i do like and comment back to every comment that comes in i will acknowledge it somehow so if i have not until this point don't worry it'll get done and then what else was i going to do no that was it thanks for liking thanks for subscribing thanks for commenting and please continue to always feel free to direct message me on instagram if you don't feel like doing it in a public forum i will take all of that and we'll answer that in the best way possible and so yeah please continue to stay safe please continue to enjoy your mania and talk to me about your whips talk to me about your plans what how do you tackle all of this um let's strike a conversation so until next time which i don't know when that will be see you later